Christian Church family, I'm very happy to introduce my mommy, Tia Renee Sensutini. She's a, she's a small business owner. She owns Trace Boutique, and she's a very good mother. She bought us a four-bedroom house, and I'm sure she's very happy to preach to you tonight. Thank you. I used to tell my mom, I said, Mom, 
You know, I really don't have a testimony like everybody else's. I, I never, never drank, I've never smoked it my day in my life, even still now. But then, back right then, I said, I don't have a testimony like everybody else's. And I would say that over and over and over again, not even knowing that that was the yes. testimony. Yes. That is a testimony. Yes. I said, oh my goodness. So I began to think and I said, wow. You know, God brought me through so much over the years. Yes, I remember so. being stuck. I was stuck in Tennessee. I was sitting in a jail cell. So Celine, you're not the only one. Don't be ashamed of your testimony either. Yes. I thank God so much I was stuck. <laughs> Jesus, my soul, look back in one. Yeah, yeah, right. Woo! Hallelujah, God, right. you're so good. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about it. I got to my court date, Sister Leah, and the judge looked at me. And you know, they don't care that you've never been in, I, I've never been in trouble. Yeah. And he yeah. said, you're facing 12 to 14 years Ooh. of prison time, oh Miss Bird. I said, Jesus, oh my goodness. And I looked, I remember looking at my lawyer and I said, you know what? I said, I get this time. You need to give me a few minutes with my ex-husband because I'm going to get him. <laughs> if I'm going to jail, I'm going to go to jail for something. I remember seeing that. Hallelujah, my soul. Look back in one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. God. My God. My God. Jesus. Who is real? Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God delivered me. I sat in that jail cell and I could hear people walking past. Yes. They were walking past, but I couldn't see them that began to play on my mind. Yes. It got to my mind and my spirit. My mom came to get me. They came to get me. I didn't spend nine days, but I spent 13 plus hours behind bars. And she came and she got me and she said, when I got you, after, after some time passed, she said, when I got you, there was nothing in your eyes. There was no life. And I know it was nothing but their prayers. Nothing but God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. It's so good. I began to listen to Pastor last Sunday. He went to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Yeah. Jesus. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. That's right. As though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice. In as much yeah. as ye are partakers of Christ, That's yeah. right. Christ's sufferings, That's that right. when his glory shall be revealed, uh -huh. ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. So I began to listen. So I said, what does, what does that mean to me? What does that mean to me? Here we go down the road zone, and here it is. You know, I'm, I'm faced with another trial. And I remember Pastor texting me. He said, don't text. Don't say anything. You sit back and you let God handle it. You sit back and you watch God handle this situation. Yeah. And oh my goodness, that thing bothered me so bad. I said, why can't I say something? Ooh, I want to defend myself. Ooh, Jesus. Because I felt like I was right. Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, my soul. Look back and wonder. Oh, hallelujah, God yeah. is so good. Yeah. Jesus, but I obeyed. Yeah. And that's what he said last Sunday. Sometimes we go through things on and put ourselves in stuff. Yeah. That's right. Due to the, a lack of due, due to disobedience, yeah. a lack of being yeah. obedient. Yeah. We put our own yeah. self through things. Yeah. Jesus. That's the truth. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God has been so good to us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah. I want to go to another scripture. I'm going to leave this scripture with you, and then I'm done, y'all. I'm going to get out right out of the way. Yeah. The scripture is Joel uh -huh. 2 and 25. Yeah. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh -huh. And somehow or another, whenever I have to speak, I come back to this scripture, yeah. no matter what the topic is. Yeah. Because no matter what, we, what we're going through, what we're faced with, yeah. when, when you come out of that thing, pastors say you're free. Yes. You're free now. Yes. And God knows last Sunday I felt a freedom come upon me yes. that I had not felt in a long, long, yes. long time. Yes. And I just began to think on I said, God, I thank you. Yes. God, I thank you. Yes. I've been sitting in service and my arms and my feet, everything just felt so heavy. Yes. So heavy. Yes. I just, if I did 
head of my hands uplifted them like this because they felt so heavy, so heavy in spirit. Being here under the power and the anointing, all of this around me and can't do nothing. Hallelujah, because you're in your own self, in your own head, in your own feelings. Hallelujah, but God said I will come and deliver. which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Yes. The, and praise the name of the Lord your God yes. that have dealt wondrously with yes. you. Yes. And my people my shall Lord. never be ashamed. Yes. Yes. Never be ashamed. Yes. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel yes. and that I am the Lord your God and none else. Yes. And my people shall never be ashamed. Never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit yes. upon all flesh. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Yes. Yes. Your old men shall dream dreams. Yes. Your young men shall see visions. Yes. Yes. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. God is not going to leave any of us out. Yes. Hallelujah. No matter what we think about yes. ourselves. Yes. We come here, we not the pastor, we not Minister Tam, we not Mother Foster, but we are somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Yes. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Yes. The sun shall be turned into darkness and yes. the moon into blood. Yes. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever... Yes. Come and you don't want to come. I don't even 
to care anymore. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit here by myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But just like Sister Mark said a couple weeks ago, I got to get up off of my do nothing. Yeah. At this point, I'm by myself. Yeah. They don't want to come. They don't want to be with me. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I ain't got no choice now but to look up. God, I guess I'll call on you. Hallelujah. Which is what I should have done. Yeah. 
for even having the thought that God just I just want to sit down sometimes. Yeah. I don't want people to look at me every service and wonder why can't I sit down. Yeah. I just please God. So last Sunday, I last Saturday I got up to do some things and I got my son together and we went to go get in the car and I go to start the car and the car won't start. Amen. Now y'all see my car. It looked like it should start, yeah. right? It looked like it should start. Right. So I sat there and I just thought to myself, before you get deflated, before you get worried, uh -huh. I said, God, please let this thing start today. And I went to hit the gas, and it started right on up. It started right on up. Yeah. God, but you know how we do. You know how we do. I wasn't, I wasn't completely, completely 100%, because in my mind, I thought, like, maybe if I could just chill a little bit, God, I ain't going to step out on you. I ain't gonna go completely back to the world, but I, but I think I'm gonna sit back some. Yeah. And then Pastor came with the word on Sunday and said, "My soul looked back and wondered yes. how I got over." Yeah. And I had to rebuke myself. I, I had to do it myself because I thought about the times when I wasn't fit to do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. God, when I was running the street, when I was yeah. disobedient, yeah. when I flunked out of school, when I was giving my body away, when yeah. I was doing drugs, yeah. when I was leaving my baby with my sister, yeah. when I just wasn't good to do nothing. Now yeah. God put you in a position yeah. where you can handle anything in the church. Yeah. God, and now you done got scared. Yeah. Yeah. Tell God. Yeah. Yeah. God, so I sat in the car and this verse that came to me as I went to get my little notifications read and everything. Yeah. And the verse came out of 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it reads, For ye are bought with a price. With the price. Therefore glorify in uh -huh. your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That's right. Which are God's. Not Jesus. So oftentimes, Pastor says we are in deep water. In deep water he says you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. <laughs> now, I done got out in this deep water and decided I'm a little far away from the shore, Lord, but I don't want to swim. But I don't have the choice. Even now, Pastor has told me you don't have the option to fail. That's you right. simply do not have the option to, to fail. So it's not this, uh, like Tia said, it's not a new word. But it's the same word coming back up again in my yeah, life yeah. Yes. that God has already put out the claim over your life. Yes. That's it. Yes. The, the claim has already went out for your life. So now you are mine. Yes. So the things that God has set out for me to do, I have to do. Yes. And another thing that pastor told us is that you either comply or oh, die. Yes. So when I got that word, yes. I read it as such. Yes. And sometimes the word comes harsh. And so, but it seems like that's just what we need to get ourselves that's together. Right, right. So today, yeah, right. I'm up here preserving my life. And if I had a nugget for today, it would be you can tell how you value your life based on your level of obedience. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah and that nugget good. again is you can tell how you value your life, your life uh -huh. based on your level of obedience. That's good. Now here, sometimes, no, we don't want to always wear your long dresses. Sometimes you might want to wear a little sharp pantsuit, but do you value your life? Yes. Sometimes you, you, pastor said, wait on your mate. Let yes. him come to you. Yes. But you might want to go uptown, go to brunch sometimes. You might want to get cute and go to the club sometimes, but do you value your life? Yes. And even That's us good. as children, sometimes you talk to your parents and they tell you certain things that you shouldn't do, and you say, I don't want you running my life. I feel like I can make decisions for myself, yes. especially when you get up in age, but do you value your life? Yes. Right. God. Yes. 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 God, my yes. next verse is going to be coming out of Ephesians 3 and 20. Go ahead, Gabo. And it reads, now unto him that is able to yes. do exceeding yes. above yeah. all we can ask or think yes. according yes. to the power that worketh yes. in us. All right. Now, most of the times when we read this verse, we equate it to offering, yes. and we take the verse a little light. Yes. We talk about our blessings, and it's something that we get so excited about, which is good, which is good. Stay excited. But when I read this verse in my life, I read it about the times where I couldn't even think of being saved. I didn't have salvation ever even on my mind. And God thought to set me apart, yeah. to bring me to Charlotte and save my life. Yeah. So I think on the times that even now, I, I couldn't see myself being up here. Based on even 
just how I live my life. Yeah. For even pastor, they say sometimes you're going to be a woman of God. Me? Yeah. And sometimes my sisters joke and say, this ain't Gab from Norview. This ain't Gab from Berkeley. Yeah. I'm like, honey, I'm shocked at myself. Yeah. <laughs> all the other ones going on. But God is living in this place. Yeah. Yeah. So leaving that, God is, has to and is doing the work. When we get to that part that says, according to the power that worketh in us. Yeah. And that leads me into just the fact of not giving up on yourself. Yes. Allowing God to work yes. in you. Yes. Letting God work in your family members. That's right. Don't give up on the ones that yes. don't seem to get it. Yes. God, because the word says, behold, all souls are mine. Yes. Yes. Pastor That's said right. that the other day, and it just blessed me to remember to keep my own mouth shut. Yes. Sometimes we feel like we little Jesus because, yes. you know, learned a little bit of word. Tell you feel yeah. like you can tell somebody what they should or shouldn't yeah. do. But the souls belong to God. Yeah. That calls for your sister, your brother, your husband even. Right. If he's there doing his duties, That's right. God, his soul belongs to God. That's the correction right. comes from God unless Amen. you're set as a leader. Yes. And I had to learn that myself. Every opinion that I have is not needed. That's Every right. correct, Everything that I even think is right is not right. Because just as we found out through the word, everything you think that you ought to know is not all of what God would have you to know. Some of that stuff we just gotta let go of. That's it's not gonna do us any good. God, so my ending verse, guys, is gonna be coming out of Romans 8 and 39. And it reads, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. So I'm just gonna end on tonight, God. Jesus. God loves you, church family. Yes. Amen. So if he brought you through before, yes. he's going to continue to bring you through Amen. the things that may be before you. Depression can't keep a continuous hold on you. That's right. Satan can't have a continuous hold on That's you. Right. Poverty can't even have a continuous oh, hold on you. Yes. God is going to see us through all of this. Yes. Why? Because he loves us. Yes. Because he cares for us. Amen. We yes. look at this your family hasn't given you that love, yeah. but remember that at all times, God loves God us. Loves God us. loves us. So when I think on how my soul got over, yeah. God, yeah. hell, just the hell. Yeah. God is my hell. And I'm seeing it more and more every day Amen. that Gab got to get out the way. That's yeah. right. Yeah, got, I, I just got to get out the way and let God do all that he has to do in my life because he has the perfect man for it. Everything that God has for us, God, even those things that we seem not to get right, God is going to perfect it in his time. So we got to let God do the work and he's going to continue to see us through. Amen. 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 Tablet, a notebook. Yeah. Isha got a folder. Tia got a tablet. 
It's all right. I was like, I don't know what to say, Lord. Give me, give me what to say. Then I heard Sister Tamika say, we'll be back at 6 o'clock. I'm like, that's 30 minutes before time, right? So I didn't get what I was supposed to say um, until about 3.30. Amen. Today, um, and I'm just gonna go with the flow. Yes, um, yes. So. But first, I gotta do something first, y'all. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's alright, Sue. Praise him, Sue. Power in the 
to destroy the city altogether and everything that was within it. And Abraham, who was Lot's uncle, heard this and he's like, hold on, wait, Lord, listen, I got a nephew that's in Sodom. So you're not going to go and kill everybody, are you? Like you're, you're, you're going to kill the, the righteous ones because of the wicked ones as well? Mm -hmm. And so Abraham decided he was going to go to the Lord on Lot's behalf. And so I'm going to go to Genesis 18, 23, and 24. And it said, And Abraham drew near and said, Will thy destroy the righteous with the wicked? Her adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thy also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Now Abraham is talking to God and he's like, listen, you're the judge of the whole world. Come on now, we gotta, we can't just destroy everybody, right? Oh, yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> Abraham asks his God, he's like, listen, if I can find 50 within the city, will you go ahead and spare it? And God said, you know what? The, they, it's corrupt, the whole city. It's, it's no point. But listen, if you can find 50, I'll spare it. Yeah. He couldn't find the 50. Amen. He said, we went, Abraham went back to God and he said, well, listen, what about 45? Oh, he couldn't find 45. Uh -huh. So now it's just a numbers game. You know, okay, what about 40 then? The Lord said, you know what? Why not? I'll do the 40. Yeah. Right? He couldn't find 40. So they go down to 30, they go down to 20, they go to 10. And guess what? He couldn't find 10. <laughs> Amazing. Out of an entire city, you can't find 10 people that say Amazing. Yes. However, God found it necessary yes. to go ahead and destroy it. But he did promise Abraham one thing. He said, I'll go ahead and spare Lot in his family. Yes. I'll go ahead and get him out of there before I destroy it. Amen. So if you go with me to Amen. Genesis 19, uh -huh. we're going to start at 13. I'm going to 13 and 16. It says, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake to his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. Amen. And he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Yeah, yeah. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife yeah. and upon the hand of his two daughters, uh -huh. the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Uh -huh. So pretty much the angel sent the two, uh, the Lord sent the two angels to go. We're going to destroy. He told Lot, it's your time to go. Lot said, listen, my son's a lot. They ain't ready. I need to. And so he, he 
he took his feet. He moved slow. Go ahead, he man. spoke that because he wanted to see his whole family safe. Yeah. And so the angels physically was like, listen, we don't have to get you. I don't care. Gather what you're going to gather. Get your family. We're going to take you personally and put you on the outside yeah. of the city because yeah. either way, it's going to be yeah. destroyed. Okay. So in order for us to be able to look back over our lives, and be able to see the things that God has done for us and where he has brought us, yeah, we first yes. have to realize where we was at in uh -huh. the beginning. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to go to Genesis 17 now. And it says, and it came to pass uh -huh. when they had brought them forth abroad. He yeah. said, escape for thy life. Uh -huh. Look not behind thee, neither stay and thou in the plain. That's right. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Right. Now I'm going to focus on this one because God sent instructions. Yeah. And they were important. Yeah. Yes. So yes. the first instruction, or one of the instructions that he gave them was escape for your life. Right. Right. And I've heard pastors say on many instances, some of the predicaments that we put ourselves in, right. some right. of the situations we put ourselves in, God had to create a way of escape for yes. us. Yes. Because had he not, we could have lost our very lives. Yes. 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 Another instruction was look not behind you. Don't look yes. behind you. That's right, honey. And I'm going to tell you, this blessed me. I said, well, where, where did I get this from? I, you didn't. It was for me. So I thank God for that. Because it's your, as you said, yeah. as you're on the screen, yeah. when you look back, it's not just a glance. And it's you just turn not. around yeah. and you keep going about right. your right. That's right. To look back means to regard, to consider, yeah. to pay attention to, to focus on. Yeah. Keep that. To focus on. That means your mind, your body, everything is solely on that. You look back. Yeah. And so the last one I'm going to cover is, he said, escape to the mountain. And when I thought about this, I said, man, you never seen a mountain that has been flat. It always has a hill. Yeah. And it has hills because it was designed to take you higher to an elevated height. Higher than where we were currently standing. Twenty four through twenty six, and that's gonna be my last set of scriptures. And I'm gonna bring it on in for y'all. Yay! It said, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city, that and that which grew upon the ground. Amen. And this is where my focus came from. It's but his wife talking about Lot, uh -huh. looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Jesus. And so, I don't know if y'all like me, I had to, you know, God, why? Why did she look behind him? I'm like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Jesus. Whatever the reason was, she looked, it, it, it made her disregard God's instruction. Yeah. So she was, first of all, disobedient. Yes. Yeah. And so she turned into a pillar of salt. And then I began to think, well, why was it salt? And so when I started to research salt, two things stood out to me is that its value and its usefulness. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the reason that she ended up looking back. Some say she looked back because her daughter, to see if her daughters were standing behind her. Others say it's because she desired her old lifestyle. She desired friends that she used to hang out with, the places yeah. she used to go, Where things she go? used to do. Sometimes yeah. we get in God and we're like, we're on a good path. Yeah. And sometimes we look back sometimes and be like, Lord, is they, is they still having fun back there? Yeah. Right. And so that was maybe the reason. Right. But I know right. one thing is right. for sure right. is that had she not looked back, had she not disobeyed, That's she right. would have been very useful to God yes. and she would have had value to God. Wow. Very good. Sometimes, and this is, I guess, this is a, a, a nugget, as Gab would say, sometimes the weapon that's formed against us sometimes is us. Yes. Yes. So, true. so in conclusion, sometimes you can't look back because it kills all of the God out of you. It kills all of the things that God put into you. It kills all of the power, all of the anointing that God gave you. Sometimes it kills all the things that you work hard to get in God. It kills it. Yes. Woo. Jesus. Go ahead. Woo. Yes. Instead, when you look back over your life, offer God a sacrifice of praise. Yes. yes. Offer God yes. a sacrifice yes. of praise. Yes. Yes. Woo. yes. Praise God for being yes. a light in yes. dark situations. Yes. For being a bridge over troubled waters. Yes. For being a present help in a time of need. Yes. For being a calm in the midst of 
of a storm, yes. for being a wheel in the middle of a yes. wheel, for being strength in times of weakness, yes. placing yes. crooked free feet yes. on the straight path, yes. for opening closed doors, yes. for comforting broken hearts, yes. for carrying burdens and dying for sin, yes. 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 for blessing us continuously, yes. and for loving unconditionally. Yes. Yourself, what are you looking back?